She says she believed uh, that Diddy had something to do with the murder of Tupac Shakur and said as much. Allegedly, Diddy warned her that she would pay. What's up? This is Big Wave with Patiently Aggressive Podcast, maintaining the balance. Now we back. We want to talk about Diddy. It's been going on in the news. Now it's just getting more interesting and more interesting as we go along. We just got new horrific claims that came out of Diddy um, doing some things with a remote. You know, I'm going to let her explain that to you. But what I found interesting also, I don't know if these are all allegations. I have no proof. I'm just going off what I hear off the news. And they said Diddy was uh, issuing his own IUDs. You know, he was like um, putting it inside females before he had sex with them. If who don't know what's an IUD, it's like... Uh, Birth control is like something you put inside of the woman to um, control that. But I'm, I'm going to play the video for you. You know, it's a lot of a uh, lot of things going on now with this case. Um, listen to the video. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. You a massive flashing red warning here. <clears throat> what I'm about to say is quite disturbing. There's a lot of like uncomfortable language. Um, and uh, if you are triggered or upset by sex assaults and violent assaults, et cetera, then this is definitely not the show for you tonight. The accuser is named Ashley Parham, and she has agreed to allow her name to be made public. Let's be real clear about that. She is going public with her name. She says that in February of 2018, she met a man named Shane Pierce at a bar and that Shane FaceTimed Diddy outside on the sidewalk, apparently trying to impress her. But Ashley Parham says that she told both Shane and Diddy on FaceTime that she wasn't impressed. And this is important. She says she believed uh, that Diddy had something to do with the murder of Tupac Shakur and said as much. Allegedly, Diddy warned her that she would pay for saying something like that. So let's just fast forward now to a month later, where she says this guy Shane invited her to come to his apartment. And the lawsuit says, quote, Plaintiff and defendant Shane then began to watch a movie and defendant Shane offered her a glass of water, which he retrieved and brought back to the plaintiff. Uh, a few minutes later, um, Ashley Parnham says that P. Diddy showed up with an entourage, including his top aide, Christina Corum, an unnamed woman who is not a defendant in the suit, and three unnamed men, one of whom she says was Diddy's driver, and Parham says that that driver waited outside uh, throughout the whole of what I'm about to tell you. Uh, Parham says that Diddy was antagonistic from the start and that he put a knife to her face. And now this is where I start reading directly from the complaint. Uh, defendant Shane then partially undressed plaintiff, and then defendant Diddy removed the remainder of plaintiff's clothing, removing the knife from her face, and then retrieved a bottle of liquid from a large fanny pack. Defendant Diddy then squirted a bottle of liquid on plaintiff, which placed her in fear that she was being squirted with a chemical substance like acid. Plaintiff soon realized the substance was an oil slash lubricant. Plaintiff was squirted with this liquid substance all over the entirety of her naked body. Defendant KK was then told by defendant Diddy to insert what looked like a syringe from sterile packaging into plaintiff's vagina. Defendant KK did as told, and then told defendant Diddy that she was unable to use the IUD because it had prematurely been released from its packaging, and an IUD is a birth control device. Uh, defendant Diddy, upset by this, took the so-called so, so syringe from defendant KK and tried inserting it into plaintiff's vagina instead. Defendant KK and Diddy began to argue as defendant KK continued to advise defendant Diddy that since the IUD had been prematurely released from its packaging, there was no way they could insert it into plaintiff's vagina effectively. After some time, defendant Diddy heeded the advice of defendant KK and removed the syringe from plaintiff's vagina and handed it to defendant KK. Defendants KK and Jane Doe then exited defendant Shane's residence leaving the plaintiff alone with defendants Diddy, Shane, and Doe's number one and two. Defendant Diddy then picked up a television remote that was near to plaintiff and violently inserted it into plaintiff's vagina. Defendant Diddy, while violently raping plaintiff with a television remote, told plaintiff that her life was in his hands and that if he wanted, he could, quote, take her and she would never be seen again. 
Plaintiff began hysterically crying from the threats by Diddy, along with the pain of being violently, vaginally raped by defendant Diddy with the television remote, as well as the lingering pain from the ordeal with the IUD syringe insertion. Defendant Diddy then instructed defendant Shane to turn plaintiff on her stomach, seemingly tired of hearing plaintiff's blood-curdling cries. Defendant Shane then grabbed plaintiff by her abdomen and hips and turned plaintiff on her stomach. Defendant Diddy then instructed defendant Shane to put a pillow over her head because he didn't want to see her face or hear her cries and instructed defendant Shane to anally rape plaintiff. Defendant Shane did as he was told by defendant Diddy and began to anally rape plaintiff. Defendant Diddy then violently raped plaintiff anally after defendant Shane. Defendant Doe number two then joined defendants Diddy and Shane taking a turn anally raping plaintiff. Immediately after defendant number two raped plaintiff, he exited defendant Shane's residence. 